Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. If you have been waiting since uh, 4 Eastern or 1, 1 Pacific, um, we were having some technical difficulties, but better late than never. Um, really excited to host this panel today. Um, I'm Jess Flack. I'm the CEO and co-founder here at Ubiquitous. Um, and rather than butchering their intros again, I'm going to pass the mic along so that our lovely panelists can introduce themselves. Uh, first, let's start off with, with Jack here. Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Jack with Creation Agency. We are growth marketing demand gen agency that works with clients all the way from SaaS to e-com. So I'm excited to you know have this conversation because Black Friday is what, like three three months? It's three months long now, so we should have some fun with this <laughs> <laughs> I know we were joking about that in the prep call that we were like almost late to the game by talking about Black Friday now at the yeah. beginning of November. Um, <laughs> Most people have already um, launched but... their Black Friday campaigns and we're just barely talking about it now. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's never too early to start nowadays competing for a lot of attention, but uh, great to have you, Jack. Um, all right, Daniel, you want to introduce yourself? What's up, guys? I'm uh, DT from Straight Up Growth. Uh, we are an Amazon growth agency. We'll do like half a billion sales this year on Amazon. So Bezos por Bezos, excited to talk Q4. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Awesome. All right. And Zach over here. Yeah, guys, I am one of the strategists at Ubiquitous. We do influencer marketing and kind of scale that for some of the biggest brands in the world and we have a great time doing it. So excited to share some cheat codes and uh, some special ways to get some more customers in Black Friday. Love it, love it. Fabulous, well, let's let's hop right in. And you know, I feel like we got a bunch of marketers on the call. Um, also for people quickly before we get started, um, people that are tuning in, drop your name, let us know where you're, you're tuning in from. Uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a fun fact if you feel like it. <laughs> um, but you know, want to get to know you all, and feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Um, at the end, we'll have some time for Q and A. So if we don't respond to those questions immediately, stay to the end, and we will definitely answer all your questions. Um, but great. All right, now all the rules are out of the way. Let's talk about Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, you know, we have a bunch of marketers on the call, so I feel like it's only fitting that we talk about this in the a traditional like marketing funnel kind of way. And so let's start very top of funnel, start traffic. Um, so I wanna hear from each of you, how do you leverage outside traffic? You know, particularly traffic that you're sending to marketplaces like Amazon or like third party retailers. Um, uh, yeah, so Daniel, if you wanna to, kick us off. Love to jump yeah. in. So, um, you know, people tend to think about marketplaces as just a marketplace, but at the end of the day, that marketplace still lives in an, in an omni-channel world, right? Um, and so brands that really, really crush, especially on, on peak holidays or peaks, you know, volume traffic days are brands that leverage a full funnel strategy, including outside marketing, right? Um, so things like, uh, you know, driving, like it, let's say you're running a big promo on Amazon, right? Um, there for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. You don't just have to run Amazon traffic to it, right? Um, TikTok, for example, for Prime Day last year was the biggest driver of traffic um, to Amazon's website, uh, for example. So wow. brands that had a strong TikTok strategy that thought about using a brand referral link to actually hit to Amazon, right? There's some really, really great ways to to, to spike your sales. Um, we, you know, even email. We have a client who um, used some of their dot com. Uh, customers sent an email blast out to them on Prime Day, uh, not fall Prime Day, but during the summer of, of last year, they did over $200,000 on a single email, right, um, there. And people just don't think about the power of that outside traffic, but should definitely be, yeah. be utilizing. No, you know, I, I love that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think, you know, depending on what you're selling, obviously, if you're working with influencers, you know, we all know that you should be doing an influencer strategy. But, you know, if you're doing your <clears throat> you know, if you have your own media channels and I could, this could be for a B2B SaaS company, this could be for e -com, but like if you're doing your own podcast, you know, wearing your merch, you know, a month leading up to it, wearing, you know, w whatever you're selling, especially if it's like apparel, things like that. Like, how are you implementing that into your 
you know, workflows. Like if you're a B2B brand, like that right now, like Gong is a prime example. Like they're a B2B brand who has a e-com, you know, marketplace. So, you know, leading up to this, they could be having some fun in their marketing campaigns and saying, hey, download this. We're going to send you a 20% off, you know, code for our beanie, you know, <laughs> coming up because it's getting cold in San Francisco, right? And like we're doing a 20, 30% off crazy sale. So, I mean, the, there's just so many ways to use all of your channels and get really strategic, you know, a month leading up to it and teasing that you're about to give people, you know, a deal of a lifetime. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, it is about creating kind of the narrative and having that build up. Um, Zach, as one of our strategists at Ubiquitous, you're you're all about narrative and strategy and storytelling. So um, do you have any examples that come to mind of uh, times where we've really succeeded at sending a lot of that traffic to, to marketplace sites? Yeah, we had one of our biggest success stories with a brand called Barsis. They were looking to kind of capitalize on some viral content that they'd posted themselves. And so we started partnering with influencers um, and driving specifically on TikTok, being a little creative, getting them on TikTok lives and like showing their product being used. It was like a coaster that lights up. It's like very bright and colorful and it mixes drinks for you and teaches you how to create drinks. So we started pushing that on TikTok and ended up driving, uh, selling out their entire Amazon warehouse just within a, with a couple influencer videos by driving it to that Amazon site. Um, so it's pretty, pretty cool when you can leverage that traffic and really focus it in a certain direction, really causes some great success. Totally. Totally. I love that. And, you know, we, we know that driving traffic, that is half the story. Um, and it's crucial part, you know, I, my background is in performance marketing. So I'm very used to thinking like bottom of the funnel all the time. Um, whereas <laughs> top of funnel kind of channels and strategies, may not kind of come as as naturally. Um, but I'm curious uh, for you guys, as you're thinking about those bottom of the fet- uh, sorry, bottom of the funnel metrics, like optimizing conversion rates and like, okay, you've you've driven all this awareness, captured the the attention of your audience. Um, but what uh, what are your kind of tricks um, for storefront, Amazon? Um, kind of sites and and optimizing conversion rates. Yeah, so I mean, for, oh, go ahead. You jump, you jump, Jack. Okay, so I think like this is where I hope you're really prepared, or you you you're proactively prepared for Black Friday and where you're sending more traffic with an offer. But like you know, hopefully you have all of your your pages optimized at that point, right? Like you know, you have yeah. your proper pop ups, you have your thirty percent off. Um, if you buy X amount of, of, you know, orders, you got your free shipping offer. Like, I think this is, you're probably behind the eight ball right now. If you haven't kind of optimized the bottom of the funnel piece, which is like the customer experience going through with low friction. But I mean, there's a thousand things. I'll let Daniel get into that more, but I, I do think like right now you're really behind the eight ball and hopefully you don't waste a bunch of money sending traffic to something that you haven't already optimized. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And to add to what Jack said, right, acquisition gets more expensive every single year, right? So like even when we build out our forecast, like we know our acquisition cost for fall prime day this year is more expensive than it was like last year, right? Um, same thing for, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And so conversion rates always king, right? At the end of the day, trying to optimize that to be as strong as possible is uh, is going to be the biggest driver of like if your ads are successful, uh, if your organic traffic successful. So from an Amazon perspective, uh, specifically thinking about the mobile shopper, right? 81% of searches on Amazon happen on mobile. Uh, that makes your product images and videos probably more important than anything else. Um, so our pro tip that we typically drive for uh, Amazon, make sure your image stacks are including text on the product imagery. Uh, we call them USP, so our unique selling points, You know, each image should have a goal. Um, you should also be leveraging something called premium A plus content. Uh, it used to cost $50,000 to have access to it per listing um, there. It's free on Amazon now. So absolutely you should be leveraging it. Again, video um, and, and image stacks with, with text are huge for that. Uh, there's also something called a brand story that Amazon offers now that's free. I see a lot of brands don't leverage that. Um, it's a great way to cross promo to other items in your portfolio as well. So if you have a high traffic listing, make sure you're calling out other listings in your uh, 
in your your catalog as well, right? You know, increase that cart size. There's there's only so much you can do on Amazon, but content is a super duper easy way to to do so. Um, and it's crazy because you know brands will spend thousands of dollars on paid media, and then they'll spend hundreds of dollars on creative, right? So <laughs> so yeah, true. Yeah, it's like it's the truth. Like there's no and and you know you like you go in as an agency and you're like, okay, well, this is a great product, but like we need to, you know, we need to do X, Y, and Z to make this look really good in the feed and, you know, to get brand awareness before we ask them for the sale, you know? So I think, you know, as a company on, especially on the e com side, when you're doing black Friday, like you're competing with hundreds and thousands of other people in the space and like Facebook and Instagram, they look at your creatives and decide, you know, just like Google, they look at your page to decide whether or not you're going to get space or not. So, you know, if you want to just waste money, like don't go into this thinking about the creative side when you're running it. Yeah. Yeah. That, just yeah. to add on that, Jack, I was laughing because totally, you can totally optimize your creative. If you have bad creative, even if you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars, you're not going to convert at all. And ideally by now, like we've said, we're a little late to the show, but you want to have good creative that you know converts already that you're using to promote during these kind of high expense, the but high conversion rate times. And we've we've seen with a couple of clients, like depending on where you tell the client to go from that creative, like sometimes if their website looks kind of sketchy or weird, they're not client. People don't purchase there. They just have a huge bounce rate. But then all of a sudden you send them to an Amazon storefront or a Shopify store. Everybody's like, oh, I trust this. I know that this is going to for sure get me what I want. All of a sudden it changes the whole game. Um, and just figuring out how to tell someone where to go is also different. Like sometimes it's a nice soft pitch and other times like go click this link right now. And that's what gets that <laughs> final step for someone to purchase. Um, well, I think to your, to your point, don't be scared. Like if you're late to the game right now and you're like, Hey, I need to do black Friday. Like, don't be scared to go look at your highest performing creatives and then repurpose those right now with, right. With, you know, adding some text over it that says, you know, Black Friday, right? I mean, yeah. that's all you got to do, right? Like they get the yep. same, same creatives and then you just kind of repurpose that. Um, but knowing that you're you're running high, high converting creatives and also Facebook and Instagram are telling you, right? They're saying to you, you know, the reason we gave you a good cost per click and that we gave you so many impressions on this ad for such a low cost of money is because we really like this creative. So they've already told you what to run. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I guess the the headline is <laughs> now is not the time for just testing new creative and just kind of throwing things at the wall to see what sticks. But even if you haven't had this ample time for prep, um, look at yeah what creative is working. Change out copy, like keep it very simple. Um, but you know it's like a brand running a. a like subpar creative for the Super Bowl. Like this is the Super Bowl of of online marketing yeah. um, over this next month. It's more expensive. It's a uh, you know it's a very valuable audience. So it makes it's it's still an exciting opportunity for any brand um, to to really gain a lot of their uh, sales traction for the year. But at the same time, it's uh, gotta gotta go in with confidence and have some real conviction around what you're selling, who you're selling it to. And now is maybe not the time for, for testing because it just, it just it gets very expensive. Yeah. But for, for speed purposes, like look at what your competitors are doing, right? If you know brands that do really well, like go to the Facebook ad library um, and see what kind of creatives they're, they're running there um, on face or on Amazon. You can always just go to the top performing listings on Amazon, see what they're doing, right? Um, see what they might be offering that you're not and try to replicate that as quickly as you can. Um, as well. Yeah, and, and to your point, you know, Daniel, like the costs are high, and so the inventory is very low. So, you know, I don't know. I would love to know this. Like, what percentage of the sales for your clients? I don't know if you can say this, Daniel, but like, happen in this time, right? Like, they happen from November to December. Like, if you have a bad November and December, you literally have a bad year. <laughs> now, certain categories, like the toys, for example. 60, 70% of your sales are happening in this quarter uh, yeah. here, right? So yeah. all the inventory prep, all the prep you've done for the year is, is for Q4 um, at the end of the day. Uh, chocolate brands, anything meltable, usually Q4 is a big uh, big brand. I sell, yeah, a lot of admin calendars uh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's great. And I mean, I feel like we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but well, 
Not really. I mean, I think in an, in an ideal world, when is the best time to start? Like, let's say I'm a new brand. I have been, you know, running some Facebook ads, running some, some Google, you know, PPC, but uh, I'm still fairly new. Don't have a lot of brand awareness. Like what, what is the ideal timeline uh, for brands to start planning and executing on their, their black Friday and cyber Monday deals? Uh, yeah. Daniel, you can start this time. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. yeah. So starting on the, the marketplace side of things, right? Ideally you want to be like, it's all about ranking, right? So organic visibility is super key for, especially for Amazon, 60% of all clicks go to the first three ranking products and search results. And so we do whatever we can to get you into those first three placements. Um, but it usually takes time. So when I'm planning for Q4, right? Uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I'm thinking, two months in advance. That's when I want to start my ranking campaigns, um, ideally. Um, that's when I want to be working on my creatives. That's when I want to have my um, marketing plan, ex like planned and executed for, you know, the next three months. So that by the time I get to Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I'm not trying to rank anymore, right? I'm not trying to improve my conversion rates anymore. I already rank. I already have the conversion rates that I need um, there. I already have the deals set up the way that I want. Um, and at that point, I'm really just policing my spend to make sure that I'm hitting the goals that I have set for myself, right? So like, we tend to not panic on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, other than when Amazon doesn't do a deal that they say they're going to run or something like that. But um, <laughs> other than that, we're not usually stressed because we've already got everything planned out. We've also got inventory ready to go too, because like one of the worst things you can do is knock it out of the park and then you're, uh, you can't get any product into Amazon for December, right? And now it's like you sold all your inventory at a discount uh, and lost your rankings, you know, during that time frame. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's I don't, you know, I, I don't know, like if you're brand new and you're like, I hate to say this cause it's just the advice I'd give, but like, you might not want to go all out on black Friday, right? Like you might mm. want to actually save your money and work on your organic listings. Like Daniel said, what, you know, build your brand, build some recognition, go hire some influencers to talk about you and to, you know, because I just don't think this is the time to test. It's too expensive, especially on the paid yeah. side. So maybe if you want to do the organic thing, you know, more power to you, but I don't think you should launch anything on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, unless it's like just a phenomenal, like you just have something that's just, you know, like a, one of a kind banger that you know, like if I put this out, right, like everybody's gonna buy this product. Um, but you know, I think that's kind of rare. But like, if you're like, for example, like you're a candle company, you have no brand recognition. It's probably not the right time right now to launch your candle. Yeah, you're gonna probably bleed cash um, at this point. Yeah. No, I love I end. love that answer. Honestly, I think it's it's honest and realistic because. Yeah, CPCs are four X, you know, four X what they normally be. So I, I totally agree with that, Zach. Yeah. What about from the influencer side? Because that, and maybe let's put like, that is the best advice for new brands. But let's talk about like more mid size, larger brands on the influencer side. What do, what do you think is good advice? Yeah, I mean, even even getting influencers to like get inside a campaign in Q4 is tough just because they raise all their rates because there is hundreds of companies trying to get involved. But honestly, if you can, if you're ready and you start setting up early and you're planning ahead of time, you can probably lock in a lot of these influencers really early or get creative from them in, I mean, as early as like Q1, Q2 for some Black Friday campaigns, at least get some general creative because um, they're, they have no, they have no work right then in that time. Um, and so they can get them for a lot cheaper. Now, as you're getting closer to Q4, I would say start working in Q3, get some of that creative, get these influencers ready, even have them prep the content and like be like, hey, we want to post right before Black Friday, but we're going to sign you in August because you're going to get a much lower rate. They're probably not thinking Q4 rates in the middle of the summertime. Um, so if we can get them locked in early, I mean, you probably have a lot better conversions. Well, also your lead time, what's your average lead time for influencer campaigns? Like what are most, I mean, what, what do they ask you for typically? Well, people ask us for so many different things. Uh, some people yeah. are like, Hey, can you launch tomorrow? <laughs> it's a wide we're range. Like, uh, hey, if we get the, if we get the right person on the phone, maybe we could launch tomorrow, but not a full campaign. So we're usually <laughs> like four to six weeks. Um, 
that's if we want to get like the best rates and negotiate and figure out how much we can do. We've launched a lot faster. If you're like, hey, I have money, I need to go now. Cool. Yeah. We're not too much too worried about cost. We're just going to get the content that's really good out there. Um, but we suggest like six weeks um, to get all the correct influencers. And I mean, creative. let's be honest. If you really wanted to launch right now and you were a, you were a small company or, you know, you're a no name company, but you have a product and you are like, hey, I've got to do something for Black Friday. I mean, there's no other way than you go out and hire, find two or three influencers that are hungry right now and just run them to death, right? I mean, yeah. like, you know, if you want to put up two paid media campaigns and you're like, hey, like, I mean, you go find, a, you know, a mommy blogger that talks about toys and she's, you know, she, you send her, her, you overnight her toy and say, hey, can you just do like a quick review and we're going to, you know, we're going to run this video on Instagram and Facebook for Black Friday. And I mean, that's, that's probably your best bet. I don't know, because at, sure. least you're using, at least you're using some influence right and you're using somebody that's got some credibility in a, in a market already so you know they don't know who your product is but they do know who that mommy blogger is and they trust anything and everything she says is gold so that's probably my number one piece of advice you got to go find somebody that has the audience and has the trust and then run that yeah and if you go now yeah. jack like you're saying and get them to post even just a little bit early because they're they probably already booked up for that week of Black Friday. But if you want to get them to post early and like, hey, maybe you have to run an early Black Friday. Say, like we've said with what was it you were talking about, Jack Fabletics with Kevin Hart is already yeah. they already, I don't know, 70 percent off Black Friday sale, like the first week in November or whatever it happens to be. Um, I mean, maybe that's a that's a strategy as well. Like get one of these mommy bloggers, launch them quick before they're fully booked up for the last week well, and then run something with yeah. it. To your point, though, maybe they can't put it on their own channels, but you can get a video made from them to go yep. run on your on your Facebook and your Instagram and then run it against their audience. So, you know, maybe their inventory is totally. up, but like you could pay for that piece of creative and go run it to their audience on your own. I mean, we've done that so many times, right? It's like, yeah, you know, whitelisting it or just on your own own channels, either one. Yeah, especially if they already but have I do an think audience. It's you can run it against, right? I mean, cause in Facebook, like there's a lot of mommy bloggers, they might have 200,000 likes on their Facebook page and you can go run that ad right to their people. They don't even need to put it on their own page. You just do it for them. Totally, cool. totally. Now, and I think it's also good for brands if they are kind of going after that strategy, which I think is brilliant. Like if you are looking for that like low hanging fruit, how do I just get the, my name out as a, a brand with not a lot of like brand awareness kind of instilled, um, working with creators is one of the best ways to do that but you do have to have realistic expectations you're not going to get that two million follower creator yeah. who's built this like huge following i really and this is kind of anecdotal don't have you know exact uh, data to share but i feel like there's this sweet spot between like 50k followers and like 150k followers on TikTok specifically that like they are really gaining tractions and honestly you'll even see sometimes like that they're follower rate to their average views will be like one to one because they're they're kind of in that that growing phase and they haven't quite reached you know uh macro talent rate um or creator or, size but those are some of the best creators you can go after a lot or, of yeah, times they're not yeah they've dialed in oh, their sorry. message right sorry i don't mean to interrupt yeah. you i think i have a delay on this not by the way so i apologize um but i mean they've dialed in their <laughs> message right you know, if a mommy blogger talks only about toys or, you know, there's candle connoisseurs, believe it or not. <laughs> like no, if, they, totally. you know, if somebody only talks about candles and they do reviews on candles, like, and you have a candle, like, <laughs> that's you know, it's natural fit. <laughs> yeah, nobody's following a candle yeah. review channel if they don't like have some type of like, you know, interest in that. So I think that's what you said is like, 50,000 people that are dialed into a niche topic are way more. Um, we see this in sports, right? So we do, uh, we have a sports account and like, you know, Oklahoma football fans only want to hear from about Oklahoma football, right? They don't want to hear about LSU. They don't care. So like if you're running a yeah. campaign, you have something to do with Oklahoma, like you can only run it to certain influencers, right? Not just a college football influencer it has to be an Oklahoma um, specific influencer. Yeah. Or it could totally, you know, backfire and come off as inauthentic and come off as, you know, then you feel like it feels like influencer content versus like 
creator kind of collaboration, <laughs> you know. Um, now I'm, I, I think that's, that's great advice. Um, to kind of pivot and move forward a little bit, um, let's talk about forecasting. You know, uh, I think for marketers who have worked like in-house, they know what that pressure from their CFO or whatever feels like when you have to project your Q4 numbers, especially if you're in an industry where, you know, 60% of your revenue is coming in at Q4. Um, so what kind of advice would you guys give uh, for forecasting what uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday would look like? Um, we can start with Jack. <laughs> I mean, Daniel will probably have more of a, you know, hold on this, you know, just on the Amazon e -com side. You know, my only feedback is you got to look at past data, but we did debunk this on our pre-webinar call where it's like, you know, the numbers just like inflation has gone up. Um, just, you know, we work a lot with B2B companies and like the search term sales enablement, for example, two years ago, you got it for 10 cents a click. Now it's, you know, could be up to $10 a click, right? So there's inflation yeah. for you. Um, because what most people don't look at when they think of paid media, you know, Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, whatever that is, like it's inventory, right? I mean, it's like how many people want that spot and then you just bid on how much that is. And in today's world, like everything has gone to this model versus two years ago um, and in every niche, right? It used to be like, oh, maybe I have, I sell baby bottle, you know, nipples, right? I'm just giving you an like, that's kind of random, but like, you know, baby bottle <laughs> I've nipples. I've sold those. I have sold those. So. <laughs> there you go. Like, oh you know, actually, that's Super funny. Amazing. My wife, my wife tried to do some Amazon uh, reselling and that was one of the things she's resold. Um, but like, you know, nowadays, like you can't, that's everybody's, there's 25 companies fighting for that space. So I, I just it's changed. I think modeling your old data is the best way you can do it. But, you know, Daniel's got a better grasp on this than I do. No, and I think, I think Jack's 100% right. Ideal, ideally, if you're using your, your existing ads data, right, you're going to get some, your conversion rates, your CPCs, whatever KPIs that, that channel, you know, provides um, there. Uh, I like to kind of like use essentially past data and then tie in some theoretical data as well, right? So we'll bake in things like inflation. So if my acquisition cost was ten dollars last year uh and i've seen how inflation has happened throughout the year maybe i'll add two dollars right maybe i'll add five dollars depending on you know how aggressive the year's been uh, conversion rates usually stay pretty similar right unless things have you know unless at least from a marketplace perspective as long as your reviews are staying the same right they're not going down uh, you know as long as your content is improving like you haven't done a really terrible terrible job of switching out your content uh but usually like conversion rates going to be the same if not you know better um, if you're running bigger deals, right, you might run a, a slightly, let's say, improved version of conversion rate. But at that point, now you have all the, the metrics you need, right? Um, now you're really just figuring out what is your goal, right? So what is the sales target someone's expecting you to hit? Um, and you can back into your ad spend accordingly, right, to figure out essentially what, what you need to, to hit. Uh, my pro tip is be conservative, right? Um, nobody, no leadership likes when you, hit, you know, say I'm going to hit X and you're like, oh, well, like, we were really close, uh, but what happened was <laughs> really uh, maybe I should have been a little bit, you know, more conservative on my acquisition cost or something like that. Um, yeah. But good planning is key, right? Because it at least allows you to set expectations. It allows you to figure out what do I think I'm going to hit from an inventory perspective. Uh, what do I have to catch up on at the end of the year to hit my sales target, right? Like if I'm expecting Black Friday and Cyber Monday to be to really do most of my revenue, because there's brands that are like that. Make sure you have the right spend to support that effort, or else you're you're scrambling in, in December. I mean, I, I, have a question, I have a question on that, Daniel, and maybe Zach, you might have some experience with this too. But like, if you're especially relying on paid media, like is your traffic sources Amazon's paid media? You're relying on Facebook, Instagram. What you got last year could be a total disaster this year. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not trying to play Debbie Downer, but like how you run into this where it's like, oh, this is what we, last year was awesome. And like, we got this. And now all of a sudden it's like, it's so crowded. The cost so if you track, crazy. I'd say at least for, for marketplaces, at least for Amazon, uh, they let you see your actual market share, right? So I can go back to last year by search term and see how much market share, like clicking conversion share I had against those terms. So one of the things we do leading up to Q4 
is we make sure our market share is on par or better than it was at that last point okay. of time. Um, we can also see how search volumes change. So we might have a, a key to like, like we work a lot in uh, keto, right? We're the number one keto item on Amazon. Keto has been on a downward trend from a search volume perspective for the last three years, right? Um, but our client sales are still up, you know, 40% year over year because we found new search terms or, or we're taking greater market share than we did before. So it might be a smaller pie, but we've learned to take bigger pieces essentially of that pie. Um, luckily, nice. Amazon gives that data. Like it's a little bit harder on, I think, some other channels, uh, especially if you're more focused on, on influencers driving it, I bet. I'm curious what you think, Zach. Yeah, on on our end, it can totally be variable, because, especially with influencers, because it's just like, a, you might not if you even if you get the same creator as last year, the content might just not hit home as well as it did or as, as you think. And so it can totally drive either a different sales, even different views, um, and maybe even different audience because we don't get to actually target the exact person that we're looking to target all the time unless we're going to that paid spend. When you launch an influencer, sometimes though they're trying to find the people that are going to be in that target, it may not be the same people that are really interested in purchasing that right now. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. definitely Jack, we have some changes and we try to make as many adjustments as possible right before. Um, and if we're with, we're working with long-term clients, it's a lot easier for us because we know what's converting, what's working, which influencers utilize when it's like, Hey, we want to run a black Friday campaign. It's like, all right, we are going to do our absolute best based on previous campaign data to try to perform for you. Uh, but it's much better when we can like have a couple months with you beforehand to try and ramp up well, to this really big push. The other thing that sucks with influencers, and I mean, this is one of the down, one of the, you know, very few negative things. So, you know, don't think I'm talking bad about it, but like, uh, sometimes <laughs> it can be what time, time of day they post, right? Like there's yep. so many, there's so many variables, like, you know, you just hope that you're, that's why you should pay the influencers what they're worth, because if you don't, they'll give you the, you know, the bad time slot, right? <laughs> um, you know, we all know that, how that works. And then the, yeah. on top of that, you know, the sometimes like you know if it's instagram for example like you're just at the luck it's luck right so like if there's not a lot of inflow of good content coming in and you hit the explorer page because you know you just so happen to be posted at the right time where a lot of other i mean there's there's a lot of variables with influencer marketing you know good and bad right that that you that sometimes your influencer could have no control over like it could be really good content but it just didn't hit the explorer page like it did the last Black Friday, and that could have a huge impact on on how that converts. We, we also had a Jack where we've had influencers tell our brands and we're like very clear with them when they think they should post based on their whole audience state and everything. The brand's like, no, we want it right now. And I'm like, I promise it's not the move. Like if they're telling us specifically, hey, my all my content does better at this time, let's trust them a little bit on timing and like let them do their thing because they want you to succeed also. So you come back and pay them way more money. So like, let's, yeah. let's understand that it's a partnership uh, if you talk to them that way. So. hundred percent. Totally. No, that's a good piece of advice is like, if you're a brand and you're running these campaigns on your own, like working with influencers or even through a partner, but like, let ask the creator, like, when is the best time for your account for you to post? Because we can all look at aggregate data online and we see like, okay, lunchtime on Tuesdays is like a great time for LinkedIn or whatever. But uh, yeah, the creator in that case is really the arbiter. They, they are your ad manager because <laughs> you don't have that same level of control that you do in like Meta or Google ads. Um, and just for anyone that's listening in, um, DT, whenever you're talking about, um, how Amazon shows you like the market share that is super tight. I did not know that they did that, but um, Google, Google does as well. Um, now it won't necessarily tell you it, it's only for retroactive reporting, which makes sense. Um, of course. Um, but you can also use the Google, uh, Google keyword planner. If you're kind of doing projections um, and looking at, average cost per click for certain keywords or whatever. And also like what level of spend you need to uh, fund those campaigns in order to hit certain market share. Um, Google keyword planners are great. Yeah. And great those are huge. Like getting a gut check is huge. Like I've had brands who are like, Oh, when we launch, we're going to be doing a million a month. And I'm like, why? Like show They're like, <laughs> volume. and I'm like, 
we give like 5,000 searches a month. Like that's, that's good. You're going to do some volume, but you're not doing a million dollars just because you think so, you know? Uh, so. That's actually a great point. Like data is like, it's yes, it's, um, you know, exact and it's math, it's, it, but it's a science, but at the same time, it is all about how you interpret it. And I think that something that gets lost sometimes whenever you're only looking at your own like kind of insular data as a brand is like statistical significance. <laughs> like, okay, you got 10,000 clicks last Black Friday. That's incredible. But like, what is that as a percentage of all the clicks on Amazon, you know? And it, you know, it, I guess that's a, more like market share, but still like understanding your data also in relation to aggregate data. That's why I think it is the exact right call to both look at year over year comps, but also look at, you know, assumptions and look at um, you know, what was the exact word that you used, um, theoretical data um, and go with your gut, do as much research as you can, but that's all the projections are like, it doesn't have to be over overcomplicated. It's all just based on like what you know and what you feel really good about. <laughs> and you have like, a, you know, a good conviction about. Um, so moving ahead, like, what do you guys think are some common mistakes uh, with Black Friday, Cyber Monday marketing, whether from acquisition and creative or conversion rates? Um, we can start kind of broad, but um, Zach, we haven't started with you. Let's start with you. <laughs> yeah, um, I think. Can you say that question one more time real quick, Jess? Oh, yeah. No, like just common mistakes that that happen. We a couple common mistakes that we've had was we did have. I think, Daniel, you mentioned this right in the beginning was that like not having enough inventory and crushing your your ad creative and everything we did have that with one client and i always joke with them on calls to this day like we sold out within one day and still had a couple other influencer posts to go live and i was like come on you trust me to do my job but it was it was like really funny banter that we had back and forth um but then also not having like without having enough data don't get way too much inventory either like there's a there's a happy medium in between like forecasting. We had one client that just like went so overboard on Black Friday, like items that it was like, well, we did our we did what we projected. I don't know what you're going to do now. Like there's a lot of inventory there. Um, and if you can hold it cool, but if not, and it's something that you're worried about, then then definitely don't order way too much. Be be conservative, but also optimistic on, on kind of what you're looking for. I think that's the biggest one for me. Totally. Yeah, no, that's great. As you want you, you don't want to be turning away a lot of the traffic that you're spending a premium on <laughs> you're, you're paying extra to get this traffic. So you need a real product for them at the end. But even if you do sell out some FOMO is good, but like make sure that you have an email subscriber list or like some way to like capture the demand of an audience, even if you don't have product for them anymore. Um, awesome. What about you, uh, Jack? Um, you're gonna have to rephrase the question. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, just common mistakes. We're oh. we're rounding home here, so we're gonna talk about common mistakes and then some some final takeaways. But, um, you know, common mistakes, like I said, just not being prepared and understanding what what needs to happen in order to have a successful campaign. Just see this too much. It's just like you know, you got this product, you've got some unproven creatives, you've got unproven audiences you're running it to. And, you know, you just end up wasting a ton of money and you're, you know, you're, you're paying three X what the, the cost of the product is to sell it. And then you just get desperate at that point and you end up losing money. I mean, I've seen it just time and time again. So you just have to be prepared and just don't just run campaigns because you think you're going to convert. Like you got to really think through it. Like, it's just too expensive nowadays to, to, to mess it up. Like you literally put yourself out of business with one bad black Friday. <laughs> if, <laughs> and that's, yeah. That's Especially true. in this economy. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right. DT. Yeah. So, uh, starting too late. I know we stressed that at the beginning, but you know, black Friday, cyber Monday started a, a long time ago. Right. Um, so when you're thinking mm -hmm. of that, 
Uh, now that's going to happen for any peak traffic. So you don't have to think of it just for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. If Valentine's Day is a big deal for you guys, if Mother's Day is a big deal for you guys, right? Like think about it two months in advance, make sure you're already planning and, and putting into execution things. Uh, two, like we talked about running outside traffic, particularly for marketplaces, uh, make sure you're running a discount, right? Um, there, just give yourself the best chance of, of incentive. Uh, Amazon has something called a brand referral bonus specifically where Amazon will pay you 10% of any of those sales that are driven. So if you're a brand, you want to get attribution, but two, you can just offer a 10% discount. Amazon's paying it for you. You don't have to offer any discount technically that way. So, um, it's just low hanging fruit. Um, and don't try and rank in one day on Amazon. Amazon is a long-term ranking thing, uh, there. So if you're planning on just like throwing a bunch of money at it in a very, very short period of time, it's, it's not going to work, right? It's a long-term sustainability thing that DC, can you rank them in one day if I really wanted it though? Yeah. Cause you could, that you theoretically, there's an hourly ranking thing. So you'd sit there, you'd <laughs> rank, but then you fall off the next day. Okay. So, <laughs> same, but I could rank you for a day. Uh, yes. Uh, I like to hear. For, yeah, Zach will be hitting you up afterwards yeah. for his next big idea. I just want my name to be ranked on Amazon. That would be hilarious, actually. Under <laughs> Keto. Or... Yeah. Uh, awesome. All right. We've got just a couple more minutes here. Um, so let's talk through just cheat codes. This is, you know, cheat codes. Um, your top advice or top three takeaways, however you want to phrase it. Um, but yeah, final, yeah. final thoughts from, from everybody. I'll jump into um, a few that I had start. for you guys. Yeah. Perfect. Oh. Uh, so since we're talking about content, particularly like TikTok things, using like UGC content uh, in your Amazon listings itself um, there, if you have any influencers that are doing posts and they let you reuse the, the content, like, put them in your Amazon listing. Uh, that, that social proof is still very valid um, there for sure. Uh, I also, like I mentioned, that brand referral link is a huge asset that people don't think about um, for sure. Um, also, uh, Amazon's DSP, like a lot of people talk about search ads, their DSP platform is awesome um, there, but understanding your audience and your goals, right? Are we looking at uh, new to brand customers? Are we trying to sell, uh, you know, new items like into customers that have already purchased. There's a lot of really good things you can do from an audience perspective uh, there. You want a strong search strategy, but definitely think about DSP because it's uh, it's definitely an unsung hero. And now you can even do things like streaming TV video. It's got the highest video completion rate out there. Like uh, I think it's a 92% oh. video completion rate, which is wow. fucking sick. Um, <laughs> yeah. How Insane. long are those videos normally, Daniel? Um, you can run like five to like 30 seconds, um, but they're pretty pretty awesome. awesome. Um, yeah. Cause think about like when you're on prime video, nobody skips those for some reason. Um, so yeah, that's cool. that makes sense. It's not like YouTube. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. So my cheat code yeah. would be, my cheat code would be packaging your incentives. So, you know, you've got to like, if it's black Friday, like it's got to look like a good deal. Cause I mean, everybody's, mm -hmm. and the thing about it is like, if you did things right and you look at your numbers, you know, if somebody buys three of something for 70% off, you know, what is your margin on that? I mean, there's just a lot of ways to make something look really good and how you package that when they get to that landing page, whether that's, Am you know, Amazon or uh, your Shopify, you know, site, like it has to look like a good deal. I think like a lot of people will come in there and they'll just slash like, oh, it's $25. Now it's $20. That's not a good deal, right? Or it doesn't look like a good deal. So is it, you know, buy one, get one free. That's a good mm. deal, right? Like that's a completely different strategy than like, you know, just crossing it off and putting. So just get really strategic. Like everybody's looking for a deal. And maybe, you, you know, you could, I've seen companies where they package this, where it's actually not even a deal. If you really like got down to the nitty gritty of it, right. It's like, well, they made you buy five of these. You would never have bought five of them, right. For 99 bucks instead of two for 50 or whatever. So you know, all perception, like you got to think about how you're going to make it look really, really good. Um, I'm not going to like Jack, that, that happened to me the other day. There was a good deal that was like this, uh, it's like mouthwash that I wanted. And it was like, we added a toothbrush 
and a tongue scraper yeah. with it. And I'm like, it probably cost him like 20 cents. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's a deal. Like that's yeah. what I'm gonna buy right now. I have to scrape my tongue. I like, why <laughs> yeah, have I not to do this? I was like, I wasn't even gonna scrape my tongue, but now I am and I don't know why, but I, it's, but it's in perceptive. this kit, you know? <laughs> it's perceptive. Totally. And, like, and online, you know, that's where your creatives come in, you know, that makes something look really, really good. And um, the other thing is like some people, and this is just, honest truth because people don't do the research they'll give you 70 percent off but they've raised their price 50 right so you go to the <laughs> yes. landing page, you know you go to the landing page and you're like oh my god i'm gonna get 70 percent off so this was a hundred dollars i'm gonna get this for 30 and then you realize that in normal times they sell that for 50 and give you a 20 percent off so um marketing is magic right uh and it's all perception <laughs> so you got to really think about that on how you're gonna you know present that to your especially yeah. during these times have you seen the totally. tiktok trend going crazy with girl math uh -uh. this is what it reminds me i of have it's, it's like yes. all about <laughs> it's all about like well if i were like if i bought something and then i return it that's like free money and then now i go and i got like these shoes that were 50 percent off and that's why that's 50% money back to me that I get to respend again, even though that that's all happened. So, like, <laughs> thinking, it'd be funny, honestly, to get some Black Friday content with girl math. Somebody just explaining how basically it's all free, all of our offers because of, you know, the discount that it gives <laughs> us overall. So, yeah. I mean, we TVs, gotta, TVs are a prime that. example. TVs are a prime example right now. Like, if you go to Walmart, like, TVs look really, really cheap, but. If you mm -hmm. looked at them at regular time, they've, you know, a lot of times they've given you a really low quality TV, right? It's like, you know, they're giving you like the bottom of the barrel TV and, and making it look really cheap when, you know, in all essence, like that's what that cost of that freaking TV is, you know, that's what the market is. So I don't know. I think you just got to get really yeah. creative about how you, you package your stuff for this time of year. I think that's super smart. I mean, I consider myself to be a pretty savvy uh, online person, but I've gotten got by so many like Prime Day discounts. I mean, I've got a big old TV in there that I got on a Prime Day that, yeah, weeks later, look, and I see that the price was, it wasn't as hefty of a discount as I originally thought. But yeah. hey, that's just good marketing. You're right. Like, it's all about well, the presentation. Also, like, perception matters. Like, people right now are, are assuming they're getting a good deal which they're not, you know what I mean? Like they're not going to go, I mean, I, maybe people are getting more savvy, so I don't say that, but like people are, they're going in there and they're already assuming like, oh my God, this is a deal. Like, because it's Black Friday, like yeah. there's no way this isn't a deal. So you're marketing. They've already decided coming. that they're going to buy something that day in that yeah. transaction, like within that session, they're purchasing and spending some money. So like you've <laughs> already, they're already warm, you know? <laughs> you've done a good job of marketing your product when, like you, they go and they buy something and then they call a friend and go, holy crap, I just got like this crazy deal. And the friend goes, well, that's not really like that big, good of a deal. And then you're like, oh, yeah. like that's when you know you've done a great job. <laughs> yeah, success. <laughs> uh, love it. Okay, well, we're up on time. Um, you know, we didn't get any Q&A during the live here, but just want to encourage anyone if you're watching on rewatch um reach out to us you know uh i know that all all four of us would be more than happy to answer any questions that you have via messenger connect with us on linkedin um so feel free to do that but guys thank you so much for your time for uh bearing with us with some of our technical difficulties at the top uh really appreciate it i feel like we had a really good discussion but Awesome. Yeah. Any guys. any final thoughts? <laughs> Sign be careful off. what you be careful what you buy on Black Friday. <laughs> make sure, <laughs> yeah. make sure we're all out everything. To get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Use Wayback Machine and see what the price was two weeks yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, I just help people find what they're looking for. That's my job. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Mm. Well, thanks guys so much. I want to have a great rest of your Wednesday and happy Black Friday. <laughs> Later. Thanks. Bye. Bye.